I wanted to share my encounter regarding a predator-like being. It was sometime around 2006 or 2007, and my kids and my friends were having a campfire in the yard right outside our home. We live outside of town and have wooded areas all around us on the edge of the Adirondack Mountains in New York. Beautiful area, by the way. Off the deck of the house was a fire ring. Next to that, our property is lined with white pine trees, which are quite big and very branchy. The woods behind the pool go back quite a ways and the pine trees are continuous to the woods. I had just brought out marshmallows for the fire and sat in a chair with my back to the side of the property with the trees leading to the woods. To my right, it was light out and I sat listening to the chatter of the kids while gazing into the woods trying to relax. Well, good luck with that. There was no wind or breeze, and it was a very quiet night. I noticed a movement in the trees to my right, up in the branches that were just behind the pool. I stared at the area because I saw something move, but nothing was there. As I stared, I started to see some kind of movement, but it it was like the branches and pine needles moved instead of an animal or being, which didn't make sense. Yeah, that's pretty fucked up. I watched for about a minute when the movement leaped, for lack of a better word, to the next tree that was closer to us. There was no noise and no swaying of branches like one would expect if there was a weight on the tree. As I watched, I noticed that I was, I was seeing pixels, like in a digital picture, moving. I made out the shape of something that had arms and legs and a head, but not quite human-like. This shape was hunched down on the branch with one arm holding onto the tree trunk. The legs were bent like it was squatting and it felt like we were we were being watched even though i could see no face or any other description it was just pixelated movements in a shape of a of a being <laughs> the reception is so bad it's got a little lag <laughs> it had moved closer to us and was in the tree on our side of the pool now when I realized how close it was, I told the kids it was time to go inside. They fussed a little bit, but I insisted they go inside. Right then, my son saw me looking up into the trees and asked what I was looking at. And, of course, I told him it was nothing. I didn't take my eyes off the shape. And as soon as the kids got out and moved toward the deck to go inside, the shape moved from the branch. It was moving back to the tree where I first noticed it. The movement was so fast, so effortless, and so silent that I got scared. Then it vanished into the woods, moving from tree limb to tree limb, and was gone in a matter of seconds. Nothing. I know of no creature that can move like that, and I know of nothing that fits that description. I've never seen it again, and we still live in the same house. We all have eerie feelings about the woods behind the house, and that feeling remains with us to this day. Anytime we walk through the wooded area, we have sections of the woods that we don't venture into for no apparent reason, except for that uneasy feeling we all get. Around 1994, I was living in Nashville, Tennessee, in a small neighborhood in Davidson County. 
I was out walking my dog one day, letting him do his business out in the front yard. When I could sense something was, was watching me. It was around three o'clock in the afternoon and everyone around there was at work except me. I could just feel something watching me. I started looking at the woods directly in front of me. I couldn't see anything, but I did hear leaves rustling in the trees. So I started looking up towards the tops of the trees. The only way I could describe it, and I don't even know if the movie had came out yet, was the cloaked alien in the Predator film. In the movie, they saw that invisible creature where you could see the outline of everything, but you could see right through it. It was sitting up in the very top of the trees where it wouldn't hold the weight of a man by any means. This thing was as big as a man. I just stood there looking at it when I saw a quick flash of its eyes. It was a, a sudden bright yellow glow. I let go of the leash and took off on a dead run towards the thing. What? Fucking get him, Rambo. It literally started running across the tops of the trees. I know what I saw. While running, I thought about what I was doing. And then I thought, what in the world are you doing chasing this thing? Right? I stopped and it stopped, about a length of a football field away from where it started. It turned around and looked at me again with the flashing yellow eyes. And then it took off out through the woods, through the tops of the trees, out into the deeper woods. I, I didn't see it again. It scared the hell out of me. I never told anybody about it because I thought people would think I was crazy. In the early 1980s, I lived in a small town near the southwest part of the Chattahoochee National Forest in Georgia. I was hunting on public land in the National Forest just up the road from home in an area known as Cooper's Creek. I've hunted in and around that area for years and was very familiar with the terrain. When I located a good spot that I thought would give me a good chance at a large buck, I set up my lock-on tree stand about 12 feet off the ground. I was hunting with a 12-gauge shotgun since rifle hunting is not allowed in this area. So, fast forward to early November. I had been hunting in my tree stand several times. This particular hunt was during the late afternoon, around 4.15 p.m. I wanted to get there earlier, but I was held up at work. This was Friday afternoon, and my wife knew that I would not be home until 8.30, or even later if I bagged a deer. I parked my truck at the trailhead and started hiking into the woods to my tree stand. The walk would take about 20 minutes. I moved slowly through the woods since I didn't want to spook any of the wildlife. As I was walking, I noticed how quiet it was. Eerily quiet. I finally arrived, climbed up, and settled in. Man, I ain't got the patience to sit in a deer stand for four hours. I began to survey my surroundings. I began to have a disconcerting feeling like somebody was watching me. I just felt like something was out of place. After a while, I kept looking at my watch, wondering how much time I had left until dusk. I thought that I should leave early because of how I was feeling. 
Then I caught movement to my right side. I slowly turned my head and began looking through the tree canopy. That's when I saw it. I, I honestly don't know what it was. I was staring into the trees and I saw what looked like a large human body, but it was completely blurred. It was moving through the trees. I could clearly see the outline of the figure, but the rest was all blurry. I couldn't focus on it. It resembled an out-of-focus blob of gelatin that was in the shape of a human. Whenever it stopped moving, I completely lost sight of it as it blended into the surroundings. I continued to watch it stop and then start moving. I do so for about 15 minutes. Shit, I'd already unloaded on that fucker. By that time, I, I was starting to become scared as I was thinking about my walk back to the truck. So I waited another 15 minutes or so. It was getting dark by then, so I climbed out of my stand. Once I hit the solid ground, I wasted no time. I sprinted all the way back to my truck. I quickly jumped into the cab. I just sat there in my truck and tried to regain my breath. I drove home and said nothing to my wife or anybody else for several weeks. During that time, I tried to convince myself that I had imagined the whole thing. I eventually told my wife one night. She listened and said that it was probably my imagination. I later told my brother, who said something similar to my wife. I never told anyone else. I never hunted in those woods again. I didn't even go back for the tree stand. I took a break from hunting for about five years. I then started up again, but never in that area. I still wonder what I saw that day. I have no rational explanation. Years later, I think 1988, the movie Predator was released. When I saw the cloaked alien on the screen, I immediately tensed up in fear. That's, that's what I saw. I was shocked. Did I encounter an alien? I still wonder what it was that I saw that day. <laughs> I no longer hunt or spend that much time in the woods. I've been wanting to tell someone about the incidents that have occurred sporadically throughout my life, but I have always felt afraid of being ridiculed or worse. Today, I wanted to share my experiences when I lived in New Mexico from 2015 to 2017. My then husband was in the military stationed at Holloman Air Force Base. The base is situated a few miles from White Sands Missile Range and, of course, the Trinity site. Then, I was a gym fanatic and spent most of my days working out. By late evening, my husband arrived home and he would often accompany me to the running track at the furthest end of the base, only separated from the flight line by about half a mile of open desert. One particular night, after having finished my run, I spotted an odd movement in the desert area separating the track from the flight line. It looked like a, like a large see-through object walking between the desert plants. The bushes behind that see-through were visible but looked distorted and this thing was making its way toward the track. It wanted to get some laps in. I stood there looking at it, trying to figure out wh what it was. 
and comparing that patch of desert with the rest. It, it just didn't make sense in my mind. I couldn't wrap my head around what I was seeing. My husband came up running and said, don't look at it, just keep walking. We jogged back home and I asked him if he had seen it. He said yes, he had, but didn't want to talk about it. In another instance, I was alone at home as my husband was away on temporary duty. I opened the bedroom blinds to look at the red-winged blackbirds I'd left food for the previous night, and one of those see-through things was, was standing right outside. It, it was just standing there. This was broad daylight, unlike the first time, and it creeped me out way worse because it clearly didn't show any fear of being seen. No fucks given. It was tall, but not to the point that I would think it couldn't possibly be human. Yes, it was see-through, but its outline and its shape could still be made out because as it moved, the area it was reflecting from behind looked odd like cling wrap that had some folds. It didn't try to enter the house, and I didn't try to go outside. It just stood there for a while and then eventually left. I guess because I closed the blinds and pretended not to see it. Pretending something didn't happen has been my go-to mechanism for dealing with such oddities. Ah, the power of denial. Gotta love it. I, I didn't know what else to do. As years passed and I divorced, my ex's attitude about that night changed completely. He said there was nothing there and he denied having seen other weird things during the time we lived there, which was total bullshit because weird things happen there constantly. Sometimes I wonder if that see-through person was just military tech being tested around the base. Oh, could be. Anyway, that's all I wanted to share today. And though I have mentioned this story to my siblings and my current partner, they can't seem to comprehend or they just simply think I'm making it up. But I know what I saw. I grew up in western New York near Rochester not too far from the Canadian border. Eh? My dad built a mini mansion that backed up to the forever wild woods. That's the New York State program that keeps the wilderness as is. Once the house was built, the woods became the playhouse for myself and my closest friend, DJ. It's the early 1990s and we love being outside. One day, while exploring, we found an amazing section about 50 minutes walk into the woods that was just a gorgeous swamp full of flowers and life. Gorgeous swamp? I remember approaching it. There were snap trees all around and straight branches jammed into the ground like spikes. The solid land went into the swamp like a peninsula. The trees were almost like walls on each side that funneled us into it. We approached the water and saw snapping turtles quickly submerged. Being kids, we started skipping rocks and throwing boulders to get splashes, just doing what kids do. Then, out of nowhere, DJ and I felt a wave of fear, sort of a sixth sense. Our hair stood up. We were, we were both looking around for what triggered this primal feeling. DJ pointed to a tree across the water and I can only describe it as if the top half was bending back and forth. Not like the wind was pushing it, but like it was, it was close to snapping. Left, 
then right, back and forth. It was bending, creaking loud over and over, quicker and quicker. The bottom of the tree barely moved. Then, out of nowhere, there was this this rumbling growl that was so loud it shook our insides. I've been around loud things before and even learned to shoot an 8 gauge black powder gun. Oh man, those have a hell of a kick. No sound compared to the force of this. Picture your soul getting pushed out your back and then springing back inside like a like a giant invisible rubber band. I like that analogy. In the pure silence of this, we both ran for our effing lives. The whole way home, we ran through bushes and branches, ripping our exposed skin. We both thought we could hear pursuit all around us, but said nothing. Once home, we tried sharing what happened with our parents, but they wouldn't listen. Of course, we decided to stay inside for the rest of the day. As usual, DJ was spending the night and we decided to crash in the support. A 25 by 25 foot room filled with double hung windows on two exterior walls, a sliding glass door that led to a three story deck and a French door that led to a formal living room. Dad had worked hard. He went from a garbage man to a business owner, so this house was massive. Anyway, DJ was on the couch while I lay on the floor in front of the TV with a Nintendo. It was summer, so all the double hung windows were opened wide. I stretched out with my arms behind my head on a couple of pillows and my fingers were interlaced. My hands were sort of folding up the back of my head with elbows flared out. DJ was out and snoring, and I was half asleep watching something on TV. As God is my witness, out of nowhere, I felt a massive hand engulf both my hands and part of my wrist and pulled me toward the windows. I moved a good two to three feet and effing lost it, screaming in terror. Holy shit! It released me and within a minute, my dad ran in. DJ was silent and just staring at me. I told my dad what happened. So he went to each window and said the screens were all slid down and in place. He said that it was just a dream for me to man up and shut up. What a dick. I shut up and prayed he'd just go back out. I looked at DJ and asked if he had seen it. He just looked at me and didn't say anything about it. He ended up calling his parents and getting picked up in the middle of the night. I went upstairs and tried to sleep in my room. The next day, I called DJ's house to see if he wanted to come over, and his mom said he didn't feel good and to not call again until I heard from him. That's pretty fucking harsh. This confused my 12-year-old mind. We never got together again after that. I'd see him occasionally. He was cold with me every time. Eventually, at the end of summer, I ran into him on the canal path, one of our fishing spots, and decided to question him. His mom wasn't there to be the buffer. He finally confessed that on that night, for some reason, he awoke and saw a predator grab and pull me. He didn't use that specific word. Instead, he described it as a massive, clear, but distorted shimmer thing that reached in and grabbed me. I never knew others had seen this cloak of invisibility. I now refer to it as a predator. Did it lift the screen up, slide easily through, and then 
close it that quickly? It must have. Did it somehow pass through the fiberglass mesh? I just don't know. I looked in the morning, but saw no tracks, and DJ thought it was a ghost. I didn't put it all together until much later as an adult. I think it followed me home after we trespassed on its turf. It could have hurt us easily at any time, but it didn't. I almost think it had a sick sense of humor and enjoyed terrifying us a little bit. It's a sadist. I never went that far back in the woods after that. In the shadows of the unknown, the Glimmer Man casts a chilling presence, a spectral enigma that sends shivers through the spines of those who dare to delve into its realm. This elusive figure, wrapped in an eerie luminescence, is a haunting legend, a dark silhouette against the backdrop of unsettling curiosity. As stories of encounters circulate, the Glimmer Man evolves from a mere whisper to a shocking tapestry of shared unease. No longer confined to folklore, it becomes a symbol of the ominous and the unexplained. A cryptid that thrives on the unsettling edges of perception. Across cultures, the Glimmer Man instills fear a foreboding entity believed to traverse dimensions or manifest during pivotal, ominous moments. Its spectral aura, far from comforting, is interpreted as an omen of doom, an omen lurking at the fringes of reality. In the digital age, the Glimmer Man's tales take on a new, malevolent life. Online narratives shared among those drawn to the macabre fuel the cryptid's evolution into the modern harbinger of dread. The Glimmer Man, with its elusive and malevolent nature, persists as a symbol of the sinister unknown. Witnesses speak of its chilling appearances, the shimmering aura heightening the disquiet that lingers long after its spectral vanishing act. In the eerie quiet, beneath the moonlit pines, or in the glow of monitors, the legend of the Glimmer Man continues to cast an ominous glow, a malevolent guardian beckoning the curious to tread cautiously into the realms of the foreboding and unknown. I want to give you a glimmering thank you for watching this far into my video. Your engagement and time are truly appreciated. If you've found value or entertainment in this, consider hitting that like button and subscribing. Your support fuels this channel's growth. I'm thrilled to have you on board and can't wait to share more shocking content. Together, we're building a community and your presence is the cornerstone. Stay tuned. <laughs> you won't believe what's coming up next. Thank you for being an integral part of this adventure. Your enthusiasm keeps the momentum alive, and I'm genuinely thankful for each one of you. Until next time, stay creepy!